Welcome to day one of Samsung Developer Conference and our technical spotlight session. My name is Edward Choi. I'm the Corporate Vice President of Global Strategic Alliances with Samsung Mobile. I'm excited to be kicking off this session on how Samsung DeX Microsoft Windows Virtual Desktop is transforming the mobile work experience. I've invited some friends from Microsoft and KPN to come on stage a little later to share their experience using the solution and also walk us through the solution and demo the solution as well. But first, I want to touch a little bit on the Samsung Microsoft partnership. What an exciting year this has been. Earlier this year at the Note 10 Unpacked event in New York City, we invited the CEO of Microsoft on stage to announce to the world that we are partnering on new innovations. We unveiled some new features and functionalities like your phone, where you can take our mobile devices and actually be able to share messages, notifications with the Windows 10 device. And also make the phone call from the Windows 10 device. How great would it be to be able to also take our phones, the photo gallery, and have easy access to one drive in the cloud? Easy, secure, really convenient. And one of my favorite functionality, be able to do a quick window um, using the Samsung search bar, be able to search for all of my Outlook content direct from my mobile device. Fantastic feature, great feedback from the market already. But we didn't stop there. We also collaborated on what functions and features can we bring to market for businesses. Last month, Microsoft announced the GA of Windows Virtual Desktop worldwide. We've been working with them very closely for the past 12 months. How do we integrate that with Samsung DeX, our desktop experience software? So let's take a quick look at that. Today's digital transformation is driving every employee and every business to go further. So businesses are shifting to a desktop experience that empowers IT and enables employees to be more productive and more secure. But not all employees sit in an office, use only one device, or always work from secure locations. Introducing Windows Virtual Desktop, the full Windows experience virtualized in the cloud. Always up to date and available on any device. Optimized for Office 365, so you can deliver the most productive experience to your users. And now, Windows Virtual Desktop gets even better with support for Samsung DeX. Samsung DeX delivers both a phone and a powerful desktop-like experience with a single device. Benefit from a small and big screen experience. Switch from one application to another easily and securely. Unlock mobility, productivity, and security with the Windows Virtual Desktop and Samsung DeX. Excellent. Great functionality, great collaboration. I invited a friend from Microsoft. He's the senior program manager for Windows Virtual Desktop. He's been leading the charge in the technical integration between Samsung and Microsoft. My pleasure, and please welcome David Bellinger. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Edward, and the uh, Samsung team for my, having me here. Um, I'm David Belanger, like uh, Edward said, and I'm really excited to be uh, part of the few folks that are uh, working on this joint partnership with Samsung and to bring uh, the combined efforts of Windows Virtual Desktop with Samsung DeX. Um, there's been a lot of announcement lately, so it's exciting to be here. Uh, this is the first public conference uh, where we're talking about uh, Windows Virtual Desktop after it went generally available on September 30th, which is really exciting, so I'm happy to be here. For those of you that might not know what Windows Virtual Desktop is, um, it's a brand new offering from Microsoft. It is a first uh, party cloud service that is built as part of the M365 uh, umbrella for Microsoft. Um, from that perspective, if you already have an M365 subscription, it is just new functionality that is built in and that you get access essentially as part of that bundle of M365. And that gives you access to the infrastructure that is built um, directly into Azure. Um, and if you're familiar with remote desktop services um, that's been existing for multiple years, think about this as the next revision of remote desktop services that was built from the ground up for, uh, for Azure. 
Um, one of the interesting thing is the, the licensing and all that is very, it's a lot easier because you don't have to worry about all the licenses and stuff. Um, it's just built into M365 and you just deploy and manage all of your different uh, session hosts directly in your own subscription and you just have to kind of pay for the Azure consumption for that. And speaking of the session host, one of the big differences that comes in with Windows Virtual Desktop is the new Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session capability that we've built in. So in the past, generally, you always want to provide a great Windows experience to your end users, even when you're virtualizing it. Previously, you had to do that with Windows Server most of the time if you wanted the cost saving of being able to share one VM across multiple users and reduce kind of the cost of ownership. Um, the problem with that is that then it looks like Windows Server. So when you provide a full desktop to your end users, it's not always what they're used to. And knowing end users, anything that changes, even an icon that moves to a different spot, sometimes can be confusing. Um, the other option was to go down with the Windows 10 Enterprise uh, version, it said, um, where now you get the same um, experience for Windows 10 that they're used to, but then you don't have the same condensed number of users per VM. And sometimes when you move into the cloud, that can be a little bit uh, more expensive. Um, so we're excited to bring in the Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session capability where you get the benefit of both worlds. And it also allows you to kind of uh, have better app compatibility, access to universal apps, access to uh, Office and all that. Um, the fact that this new edition ships every six months, more like Windows Enterprise, instead of every three years like Windows Server, allows us to have a full integration with Office 365 Pro Plus. And while Office was supported in the past for virtualization environments like remote desktop services, um, it's only starting with Windows Virtual Desktop where we're really pushing hard to make Office a first-class citizen into the virtualized environment. So we're working, the remote desktop team is working really closely with different parts of Office to really make Office shine in a virtualized environment. That includes improvements into Outlook, like for better searchability and offline caching and all that. Um, improvements into OneDrive um, and other parts of Office. And we're also working on uh, uh, improving the Teams experience as Microsoft's next unified communication. Um, there will be more information about that at Ignite, so stay tuned around that. The other part is if you've already invested into remote desktop services because you've been doing virtualization for a few years and you decide to make the jump into the cloud. Um, you're able to transfer some of your investments into RDS directly into uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. For example, you'll be able to leverage some of your VMs that you've already built for on-premise and move those into Azure and just go in and install the, the right agent and things for, for Windows Virtual uh, Desktop to recognize it and add it to the different session pool. And also, if you've invested in CALs and licenses for Windows Server, when you move those into Virtual Desktop, you'll also be able to benefit from that and not have to pay for the licenses again. So you can bring in your licenses directly into Windows Virtual Desktop. And the last part is if, you, uh, if you've deployed uh, remote desktop services before, um, while you could get through it, it was still a fairly lengthy process of installing Windows Server, possibly on multiple VMs, and then deploying the right Windows Server roles, and then going in and configuring it. With Windows Virtual Desktop, Microsoft takes care of all of that. So we take care of the infrastructure, we make sure it's, uh, it's always available and always up, and you don't have to worry about any of it. All you worry about is your different session host pool that you uh, deploy and can configure the way you want with whatever applications you need uh, to make them available to your end users. So it's a lot of time, uh, time saving and typically more a matter of a day uh, than a matter of weeks. Now, the other part that we're excited about, now that we've talked about in general kind of what uh, Windows Virtual Desktop is, is really the partnership with Samsung and how do we take that to the next level. Hopefully, uh, a decent amount of you guys were here two sessions ago uh, when there was an overview of uh, Samsung DeX and the, the, the new improvements that they're bringing in uh, for Samsung DeX. Uh, one of the things I was excited to see for the first time live was uh, DeX for PC, which is really exciting. And you can think about it in simplified form as just bringing your phone or your Android experience onto your PC and use it that way. What's kind of interesting, what I'm talking about here is we're also enabling our users to do the, the opposite thing and bring your Windows experience into your Android device. Now, that one is interesting for some very specific scenario that we really like. So the frontline workers or the very highly mobile workers, there's a big trend around device convergence between phones becoming more and more powerful and be able to do more and more things. Um, a lot of folks don't want to carry as many devices around. 
So from that perspective, uh, we're trying to make sure that they get the best of both worlds and can really use it for the entire day, uh, depending on what they're working on. So from that perspective, so the goal here, as they showed in the, the DEX mode, is there's the duality of the different form factors, right? So you can use your, your phone and get a great experience, a great Android experience, and then you plug into a large screen and you get a good kind of desktop-like experience, where with Windows Virtual Desktop, the goal is to actually get a great Windows experience also when you're plugged into a larger monitor. So this way, really we're aiming for a great Android experience uh, when you're on the go and being mobile and a great Windows experience when you need to sit down and really be productive and get access to all of your different line of business apps that you might need to do for your day-to-day -day business. Whether it's uh, different ver like uh, the full version of Office that includes all the actual plugins that you might need that your company leverages um, in Excel or Word, or things like Visual Studio Code or Power BI and all of that. Um, so we're really excited about that and being able to bring the best of both worlds from that, from that scenario. And we also see a lot more uh, companies uh, coming in and changing the digital, uh, the modern workplace. So it's not always uh, people with offices and all that. Sometimes they, depending on their work, uh, their workers, they'll just have touchdown station, very lightweight and a little bit lower cost, where they've got a monitor, maybe a mouse and keyboard set up and a cable. So you can think about it as you're bringing in, you're on the go with your phone and you're able to take pictures, let's say you're an insurance agent, right? So you're going around taking pictures of accident, car crashes, things like that. When you come back to your office, you just plug in your phone, you get your Windows experience, you're able to directly access also from Windows Virtual Desktop the local files that are on your, P on your phone and be able to include those in whatever report uh, or other uh, things you have to file uh, for the insurance, the insurance claim. And then the other part we're really excited about is also the uh, 5G that's coming, and then Samsung leading the way along those lines um, and providing devices that support 5G. Being a virtualization experience, meaning things are running remotely, in this case in Azure, um, the more bandwidth you have and the lower latency you have, the better your experience will be. Um, so we're really excited about the advances around 5G that will be coming up. And then the last part is also security. Security is really important. There was a mention of it in the keynote earlier this morning. Um, in this digital world, security is very, very important. And you've seen this morning at the keynote how important and how much Samsung is investing in making sure your data is secure and everything is secure between Samsung and Knox and all the other aspects of security that they're building into their product. The nice thing is virtualization for years now has often been used as one of the points is security. Uh, the ability to leave your enterprise data safe uh, in an enterprise controlled environment and not necessarily transfer it to the device itself. So from that perspective, we're really excited um, to be able to partner the two products together. So you've got Samsung building great devices and great phone with Samsung Knox and everything and then with the WVD um, that keeps the data safe and your enterprise data. And we'd like to think about it as being able to bring security from the chip all the way to the cloud. So after talking about it a little bit, um, I'll do a very quick demo, because um, it's always exciting to see uh, kind of what happens in a uh, real person and um, see how things look from that perspective. Um, so here in this case, um, that was kind of some, some hand waving, but I've actually now switched over to my DEX enabled phone. So in this case, um, while the session remained there, let's see if I can find the mouse again. Um, so now I'm actually in the remote desktop session, uh, directly in the remote desktop client. And just to show you, I'll actually kind of go back to the home page. So here's the remote desktop client, and let me back up one more time into the kind of the DEX experience itself. So if you're there earlier, so here's DEX, right? So in this case, I've got a, a nice little Note 10 that was provided to me for the demo. And so here's my phone, right? I'm carrying that kind of day to day. I've got access to all my Android apps and I've been using it. The other nice thing with DeX is um, I can still use my phone uh, while I'm connected to a larger display. So if I could take phone calls here and actually do something else on the other side. If I didn't have a mouse or a keyboard available, there's also the ability to change my phone into a trackpad. Um, so at this point, I'd be able to control a virtual mouse on my DeX mode. And also, there's a way, depending on the application, to bring in a keyboard to enter some input. So you, do, you wouldn't even need, in a pinch, uh, a mouse and a keyboard. However, to be productive in Windows, typically people will want a mouse and keyboard. So in this case, what I did is I was just carrying around kind of a very simple kind of mobile mouse and keyboard um, that I've hooked up using Bluetooth um, to my Samsung uh, DeX-enabled device. 
Um, so I've got the desktop experience uh, from Samsung Dex. And here what I would do as a user is I would normally just launch the remote desktop client. So normally an admin would have provided you an environment where they've already pre-set up uh, basically either applications or de full desktops available to you to do your day-to-day -day work. So in this case, I've got three desktops published to me by my admin, and I also have a set of applications that they could use directly from there. And this is after I've just quickly gone through the process of subscribing to a feed to get my own personal information as to what my admin has provided to me. So in this case, let me go back to the desktop I was using just a minute ago. So in this case, now I'm back to a PC, full PC running in Azure, and I'm running the full version of PowerPoint directly on my phone. So here I'm just taking, getting out of the session just as a quick demo, I'm not gonna spend too much time. At this point, I've got the full version of Windows that's on here. So if I'm on my keyboard, if I click under the Windows key, it brings up the Windows uh, functionality. I could alt tab and move different between the different applications. We're continuously gonna uh, strive to make sure that this experience feels as much like you're sitting in front of your Windows PC, even though you're just on your phone that's just plugged into your larger monitor. So you'll be able to get access to a lot of the usual kind of different uh, desktop apps that you might wanna be using. So in this case, uh, I've loaded kind of Power BI, right? So if you're a data scientist or you do a lot of data analysis, um, your company might have loaded uh, Power BI for you to leverage and be able to access uh, all your, core, your company information and do different things. Um, outside of that, uh, just a couple sample experience. Uh, if you're a developer, uh, you could be running Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code and do some of your work in there, working on your documentation, different uh, aspects of your development. Um, I might also be working on a certificate uh, for the employee of the month, and in this case, I would obviously be giving that to Edward, uh, who's been doing such a fantastic job working with us at Microsoft and helping out with the, uh, the joint partnership. <laughs> and then lastly, just, um, just a quick plug on this. Um, I just brought up just kind of Edge runs on uh, Windows 10 Enterprise Multi-Session. Um, the main thing is if you wanted to get more information about just Windows Virtual Desktop in general and you're curious just to learn more about it, you can go to aka.ms slash WVD and that will bring you up to this web page where you'll be able to actually go uh, learn a bit more about Windows Virtual Desktop and kind of see what's next from that perspective. And with that, let me go back to the session and turn it back over to Edward. <laughs> Thanks, Edward. Thanks, Thanks David. All right. So, uh, great demo. Thank you for that. Now, when David and I were in Amsterdam earlier this year during Microsoft Ignite on Tor events, we were lucky enough to uh, meet with many service providers. One of the largest service providers out of the Netherlands came up to us and said, wow, Samsung DeX, Windows Virtual Desktop, that's the perfect solution for many of their customers. I said, that's great to hear. But you know what's better? They said, we want to test it internally. We want to see how it is from a customer's perspective. We'll have our salespeople use it, engineers use it, management team use it. And once we believe it's the right solution, then we're going to roll it up and roll it out to our customer base. To share that experience with you guys, I've invited the portfolio strategists for their solution, Digital Workspace from KPN. Please welcome Ludi Branzima. <laughs> Sir? Thank you, Edward. Hello, um, my name is Ludi Bronsma. Uh, let me introduce KPN first to you. You probably don't know it. Uh, KPN is the, the number one telecom provider of the Netherlands. Um, and we are uh, an old company. It's been around for 135 years, I think now. Um, and to make it that long, to, make, to be there for over 100 years, you have to innovate, otherwise you die out. And I wanna show you how we innovate, uh, what kind of stuff we are doing right now, and how we uh, did the, the proof of concept within KPN for uh, DEX and WVD. So maybe a little more about KPN. Uh, our uh, slogan is feel free. Everything that we do, everything that we provide, connectivity or added services, we want to do it for the customer. We want to do it for the company that uses our connectivity. Um, and we want to do that in a sustainable way. Uh, there's a Dow Jones index for su sustainable companies. And we've been in the top three worldwide 
uh, for the last eight years for telecom companies. So we want to do something good for the environment as well. Um, and everything we do, every, the basis of everything we do is, that, is the customer. We want to make his or her life more free. Do we want to make him or her more productive? And uh, we do that by connecting. We're really good at connections. We're really good at connectivity. Um, and we want to do that in a sustainable way. And that sort of uh, asks of us that we really understand the customer, that we know what the needs are, how we add value. Maybe you knew the Netherlands is an agricultural country. So one of the things that we did, we, it, it is a great time to work in technology these days, by the way. Uh, there's so much amazing technology. And the question always is, but what are we going to do with all the technology? What are we going to do with 5G, with Internet of Things, with artificial intelligence? I want to give you some examples that we're working on. Uh, one that we're, we've been working on for, for a few years now is what we call the connected cow. What we did is uh, we fed the cow a sensor and uh, it stuck in the stomach of the cow. It gives the farmer information about temperature, if the cow is feeling well or not. Um, and, and I have to say, no cows were harmed in this proof of concept. Um, but it, it gives us some, uh, some information, so we use 5G, Internet of Things. We use a lot of stuff to make the farm more smart. Another example that we make uh, farmers smarter, or not farmers, they're very smart, um, is that we have a, a field, a potato field, and uh, it's maintained by a 5G robot. So we have a robot, uh, it, it uh, uses 5G to coordinate, and it uses artificial intelligence when it runs the field it sees uh, some plants cr coming up, and with artificial intelligence, it can decide whether it's potato or a weed. If it's a weed, it takes it out, and it maintains the field, gives information to the farmer uh, about the, the status of the field, about uh, ingredients in the soil and stuff like that. So we try to use all the new technology and make use of it in a, in a sensible way. And one of the important things is that we learned is that we can't do that alone. We use partners uh, to help us with that. We use universities, customers, other companies, um, and, and we need partners to do something like that. Just one more example that we're working on. Uh, we last, a few months ago, we uh, designed a working prototype of a two-seater taxi. But the special thing about this taxi is that it's a drone. So we have a big drone that you can sit in with two people, and it's remotely controlled. And I really would like to do that. It's like gaming. Uh, so uh, there's no driver in the taxi. Two people can sit there, and it's a big drone that can move everywhere. It uh, works on 5G as well to, to reduce the latencies of the, the video and all the input that the drone gets. Um, and we do that with universities and, and other companies as well. And that sort of brings me to the, the partnership we're talking about here with Samsung and with Microsoft. Um, our IT department has a, a long history of maintaining workplaces. We uh, maintain over 150,000 workplaces, digital workplaces. And uh, we saw a lot of new technology happening there as well. And for us, one of the, the hard things that we had to learn is that the one-size-fits-all workspace is gone. Um, so we have to really think about how are people using our technology? How do they want to work? So what we did last year is we introduced a modern workplace. And what we did uh, is we really focused it on the end user. So we made some personas, uh, configured everything in M365 uh, to really make sure that it's a profile of a person who wants to work that way. 
and it's our starting point for our customers who can uh, use it in the, in the way they want to. It's based on our experience. Like Edward said, we like to try out things. So one of the things that we did a few years ago is we, everyone in KPN got on Modern Workplace. That was quite, quite a shock. And we learned quite a few things. Um, and we used those things that we learned to make sure we didn't say, make the same mistakes for our customers. So now we offered a managed service. And, um, and so people pay per month per user. And we make sure that the service is maintained, that we keep up to date with everything new that Microsoft comes up with, new technology in there, stuff that we can use. And we provide them to our customer to help them move, mostly want to move to the cloud, but don't really know how to. Uh, so we help them with their journey. One other thing that we learned is that the technology is awesome. Um, it, it's great to work with a modern workplace, having my private life and my work life on one device. Oh, I really love that. Um, but what we also learned is that one of the things that we need to do now is explain to the customer how does this work. And we, we need to do more than this is our top 10 tips for teams. So we really go to our customer and take them on the journey to the cloud, transform their applications, help people use the system, and, uh, and make sure that their transformation, their journey is ongoing. And we also tried out Samsung DeX and Windows Virtual Desktop. The last few months, we've been, uh, we had a proof of concept for uh, this solution. Because like Edward said, we, we met Edward in March, I think it was. Um, and I saw some new use cases there. Uh, like David explained, the, the really mobile worker that wants to sit down every while uh, to get some work done. And I re we really like that, that concept. Um, so what we did is uh, we got some devices to uh, several groups within KPN. We gave them to technical people. We gave them to architects. We gave them to sales, and we gave them to general management. And we had them test for a, a longer while, so uh, it was two or three months, uh, just to see what kind of use cases would evolve from that. Because um, we expected, and we were right, that they all use it in a different way. Some of them used uh, Windows Virtual Desktop, some didn't. Um, and uh, we also used several Samsung devices. We used S8s and we used Note 10 just to see if the device has some influence on how you work as well. I'll, I'll tap into some of what the, the user group said. The technical engineers, I think the best reaction we got was from someone uh, uh, who has to maintain the workplaces and is on standby if anything bad happens. But that person also likes to go to a bar. So the thing that we got back from them, their feedback was, uh, it's OK. I got my phone with me. So I can do all my work in the bar when needed. And if it's really bad, it never happens at KPN. Uh, but if it's really bad, I can just find a monitor and do some work or get some work done. Uh, the architect really loved this solution. Uh, because it's easy to integrate into a modern workplace. It's easy, it's a, a use case that evolves naturally from a modern workplace. So, uh, and it's a secure solution as well, especially if you add some uh, Nox functionality as well. Sales really loved it as well. Um, it was, um, uh, let me see, some of the feedback from sales was that uh, it was easy for them to just bring one device and show it to the customers. Um, they could just make notes all day, and when they got back, uh, put it into the system and use it uh, uh, that way. So really, the, the scenario that David described of the, the mobile worker with a uh, workplace. And general management liked it as well. They, they don't like carrying around a lot of stuff. Uh, so they really like the, the one device uh, approach as well. And also that it's easy to uh, do PowerPoints from that, stuff like that. 
So it's easy to incorporate in your daily work. And, and the quote that really uh, made it for me is, uh, it gives me the flexibility to choose how I want to work, no matter where I am. And I think that's the, the promise that we want to make to our customers. So we want to provide a digital workplace that really gives that freedom so they can feel free. And uh, we've been working hard uh, the f past few months. And what we did after we heard that uh, Windows Virtual Desktop was general available, uh, we worked on uh, commercializing uh, the solution. And it's going to be live in the Netherlands. So if you come to the Netherlands, uh, we have it uh, available in three days. So we can offer it to our customers, and we're really happy uh, with that. So, uh, and the main thing that we get out of it is we don't want to just connect cows. We want to connect everyone and make them feel free. You know, it's, uh, I've done the, these presentations for the past year and a half, talking about 5G and the promise of 5G, everything from Smart hospitals, smart base, smart venues, smart cows. Now, that's a new thing I'm going to have to use. So thank you for that. So we got some time. Um, I wanted to see if we have some questions. I'm going to ask David if you could join us on stage. Uh, so we have some time for Q&A. As you're thinking through the questions, there are a ton of resources online. Please come visit. Learn more about our capabilities. Join us, and if you want, to learn how to actually develop on our joint pl uh, platforms here. And also, if you want, there is an event coming up in the next several months. Next week in Orlando is Microsoft Ignite. We'll be announcing some additional collaboration between Samsung and Microsoft there as well. So if you definitely have some time, swing through Orlando, come here about more exciting partnership. And also, if you want to see these uh, solutions in action, come visit us at the Tech Square Kiosk C. We'll have the the WVD on decks on display, so you can actually try it out for yourself. So I'll start with any questions from the audience. Okay, start with you. Please go to the mic. Yeah, yeah go to the mic if you can. My question to Ludi: uh, Why did KPN specifically choose Samsung for this pilot, and also as the preferred devices for this solution? Hmm. Good question. Um, I, I think we, uh, I think Samsung makes great devices to, uh, to start with, so that, that is the easy one. But I also think that we met each other as sort of an, on, in the front line of innovation, trying to find out what is right for the customer and trying to, even if things are not clear yet, just trying out stuff. Um, and, and I really think we had a, a match there. So I really, and we have that with Microsoft as well. So the, the connection is really great. So that's Samsung, great devices, great people. Excellent. It's a short version. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to answer them as well. <laughs> we should. <laughs> Got it. Any other questions? Sir. Well, this is a visual on desktop one. Go to the mic, please. So it gets captured on the recordings. And oh, yeah, I forgot. Thank you. Yes. We'll use that later for some sales training. <laughs> Excellent. Since it's a virtual um, desktop on the cloud, how do we handle USB um, peripherals? Let's say I want to attach a pin pad or a card reader you know, available on the desktop itself. Uh, so there's some of it. So I'll talk about Windows Virtual Desktop in general. So depending on the device you're using, uh, for example, so on Windows PCs, we have USB device redirections and things like that. Um, so depending uh, which device, we do have some documentation online that talks about which um, devices can be redirected from what platforms. Um, part of the partnership with Samsung and WVD on DeX is as we move forward, we'll be kind of looking for feedback as to what devices are critical um, and trying to bring those into our Android app that basically is what runs on Samsung DeX um, and try to improve the functionality. Uh, so as it stands today, like you can't use a, uh, for example, just a, any generic USB device today. But that's definitely, if that's a re customer request that we get from our different customers and partners, um, something we're happy to go and investigate and see how we could provide that. Thank you. Exactly. And if you have some recommendations, suggestions, swing by and, and do share with us. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Sir. 
Hey, um, I have a question in regards to security, and whoever, whichever one of you gentlemen want to answer or multiple, that's fine. Um, it's easier to lose a smartphone than it is a laptop. So if the end user or the frontline worker decide to uh, um, um, copy files legitimately or not onto the uh, smartphone and it gets lost, uh, how do you folks address concerns such as that? Great question. I think we get this question in every session we have. Uh, embedded in all of our Samsung devices is Knox. Our Knox security platform allows us not only better management and operation of our devices, but security and privacy. So in the event that you defined and described, when we lose a device and we know it's lost, we can remotely clean out and destroy those files from, uh, from, from command control, from the office. So that way, any device that's lost, it becomes just a dumb device. All the more sensitive data, all the important IP and asset for the company and privacy for the user will become wiped. And I think the other part that I'll mm -hmm. piggyback on top of that, specifically for the Windows, uh, uh, the WD integration, is as an admin, you have a way to set different policies. If you want to allow kind of file copy or kind of picture copies or even text copy out of the session onto the device or not. Uh, so from that perspective, depending if you have a lockdown environment for your enterprise where all the data is meant to be kept safe, then you can prevent the data from even getting to that phone in the first place. So then the phone is essentially just a kind of a, not an empty vessel, but as far as your enterprise data, it doesn't reside on the phone. You could keep it entirely in the cloud on basically uh, session hosts that you manage within your, your enterprise network. So between the combination of both, it's kind of what we talked about, the security from the chip to the cloud really across the board. It really is, especially with the way we integrated. And now if you want to get really crazy, put some blockchain into our chipset and protect it truly from the chip through the hardware, through the OS, through the app, into the cloud. So it's fantastic, very secure, the best business solution on the market. Any questions? Well, thanks for joining us. If you, again, want to stop by, have other questions later, come visit us in the Tech Square. Come try out the solution and enjoy the rest of your time at Samsung Developer yeah, Conference. Right, cool. Next one. Uh, please remember oh. to uh, rate the session. Always appreciate the feedback so we can see how we're doing and how you like the session. And then, uh, yeah, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take, Take you. care. And we'll be around if people have questions they don't want to ask just in front of everyone. So we'll stick around for a few minutes if you want to answer questions privately. Excellent. Thank you.